Oh, Williams, you do find yourself in a little bit of a conundrum, don't you? Alex pranged it in FP1 in Australia. No spare chassis. He's stolen Logan's car. Logan is out of this year's Australian Grand Prix 2024. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Look, let's go straight to the source. Let's see what Williams have to say. Following Alex Albon's accident during FP1 at the Australian Grand Prix, Williams Racing confirms that due to the extensive damage sustained, it's forced to withdraw the chassis for the remainder of the Grand Prix. The chassis will be returned to Grove, blah, blah, blah. Due to the fact that a third chassis is unavailable, the team can confirm it has taken the decision for Alex to compete for the remainder of the weekend in the chassis that Logan Sargent drove in FP1 and 2. Alex crashed, Logan didn't, Alex gets Logan's car. What a damning indictment. There's, I'm not 100% sure where I sit on this, and this is where I want to kind of, I want to talk about it, all right? I want to get your thoughts and feelings, because there's obviously very compelling arguments in both directions, but let What's Val said, right, we are hugely disappointed that this damage sustained to the chassis has meant we need to withdraw it from the weekend. It's unacceptable in modern day Formula 1 not to have a spare chassis, but it is a reflection of how behind we were in the winter period, an illustration of why we need to go through significant change in order to get ourselves in a better position for the future. Yes, Williams have been designing their car on Excel for the longest time. There's a really good video from the race, actually, I'll put it in a card above, talking all about Williams and, and uh, you know, breaking things to then rebuild uh, Vowles and Fry have been going through. Obviously, they're two, you know, uh, with huge experience at top teams, right? Fry and Vowles. Williams got a long way to go still. And yeah, this is not only a damning indictment of, of how they perceive their drivers, but ultimately, it's true what he says. You know, it is unacceptable that you don't have a spare chassis um, for a Grand Prix that results in you missing an entire car. I mean, you send everyone out to Australia, this huge process sending everyone out there, and you're only going to be running one car in the end. He continues, as a result, we have had some very difficult decisions to make this afternoon. While Logan should not have to suffer from a mistake that he did not make, every race counts when the midfield is tighter than ever. So we have made the call based on our best potential to score points this weekend. This decision was not made lightly, and we cannot thank Logan enough for his graceful acceptance. <sighs> Was it graceful? Well, I don't know about that. Uh, demonstrating his dedication to the team. He is a true team player. This will prove a tough weekend for Williams and this situation is not one that we will put ourselves in again. <sighs> oh, oh, come on, let's get, get all these quotes out of the way first. I have to be totally honest and say that no driver would want to give up his seat. I would never want anything like this to happen. Logan has always been a consummate professional and a team player from day one, and this won't be an easy one for him to take. At this point, though, I cannot dwell on the situation, and my only job now is to maximise our potential this weekend and work with the whole team to make sure we do the best job possible. This is enough raise the uh, stakes then it raises the pressure on Alex this weekend especially when you consider how it went last time we were in Australia it was running very well and then he shunted last year oh Logan oh this is tough this is a tough raid this is the hardest moment I can remember in my career even harder than Qatar him having to pull over and stop racing because he felt so sick this is the hard a harder moment than that and it's absolutely not easy. I am, however, completely here for the team and will do and will continue to contribute in any way that I can this weekend to maximise what we can do. It's short, not too much to say. He must be livid. He must be fuming right now. And understandably so, rightly so, should Logan Sargent. Because look, in the interest of fairness and what is just and what is right and what we want this sport to be, okay, the idealistic side of us, looking at this sport where there's no pay drivers, everyone's there on merit, right? If you're looking at that perspective on what we want the sport to be, of course this isn't fair. Of course this shouldn't have happened. Of course Logan should be in the car and Alex should be sitting out this entire weekend, right? Williams put themselves in this position where it's high risk, right? Alex crashed last year. You're at a hybrid street circuit, okay? There's walls there that can do big damage to a car if you go off and if Williams are only gonna be bringing one chassis for each driver, then they're accepting that this was 
And this probably was had to be something, right? If you're going to go away with only two chassis, they must have considered this beforehand. They must have talked about this at some stage. If one of our driver prangs, we're going to put Alex in the car, they must have come up with it. They, this couldn't have been thought up on a whim, you know? If you're in that situation, you've got to have contingencies going forward in the same way you have contingencies around reserve drivers and the like. It's, it's a tough pill to swallow and it does... Look, you look at their time as teammates together. Alex has been bringing in all the points. Logan, very much struggling, has had his moments and I've been a staunch defender of Logan. I think Logan's going to step forward this year. This you know, I made that in my preseason predictions. I still believe that. I still think that he will show enough by the end of the year to at least give a bit more confidence and maybe keep his seat. Depends if Alex goes the other way. If Alex stays, then I think Logan's a bit more at risk. If Alex goes, then I think he's a bit more secure, in my opinion. But points count a lot for these bottom five teams. We saw Haas in Saudi last race, right? Kind of on the edge of unsportsmanlike behaviour. It depends who you ask. I'm sure some of you thought Haas were over the line and weren't very sporting in that. And others thought, you know, game's the game. I kind of fall on the game's the game and... Ultimately, yes, I do think penalties should should penalise you in the moment because then you can kind of play around them. But Haas have a rule book in front of them and they played to that rule book and K-Mag did a very good job, ultimately, doing what he had to do to, to get Hulkenberg that point. And you look at you look at Williams' pace last time he went to, went to Australia. Alex was doing very good in the race. He had a decent qualifying. He was doing very good in the race before he shunted. There was points on the board for sure. So Williams must see this as an opportunity, even though their car has significantly changed from the last time we went there. They, you know, big big overhaul this year for Williams in terms of their car. So, ah, uh, I don't know. I, I just, with so much on the line, I almost can't begrudge them for making this decision because ultimately the whole point of going there is to get points right, is, is to, to finish higher up. And this is a very, it, it's a very inhumane approach, but this is F1, this is the sport, and there's an obligation to the, you know, hundreds, if not thousand, depending on the team, right, but hundreds certainly at Williams of members of staff to, to deliver the points because the higher you finish up in the constructor's order, the more prize money you get at the end of the year, that can pay for, what is it, 12 million or something around that kind of mark, 12 million quid. Uh, in terms of per position, yes, it's very early on in the season, but, you know, 25 points at the start of the year is the same at 25 points at the end of the year. One point at the start of the year is the same as one point at the end of the year. So, uh, I don't know. What do you what do you lot think? Like, a lot of negative uh, reaction to this, and it does really pile on the pressure. Um, on Alex and I don't envy James Vowles making this decision would, would I have bothered I guess when I, when I think if, if I was James Vowles would I have bothered right because as a fan absolutely I wouldn't have changed them I, I, I don't think it's the right thing to do but if I'm in James Vowles position do I swap them because that's a, that's a different question entirely I don't know because when you swap Alex in again all this increased scrutiny, all this increased pressure, he's already shunted himself. Like, he is human as well. That would have almost certainly dented his confidence somewhat. I mean, it was a nasty hit as well. He's okay, fortunately. But if they kept Logan in the car, this could have been a really good opportunity for Logan to be like, okay, right, you can trust me. You can trust me to deliver here. The more I think about it, the more I think, even from James Fowler's point of view, I don't know if I would have, you know? Because you want to see, you want this to be an opportunity for Logan to to show what he's about, right? To show that he can step up, to show that he can do this. Because so many people doubt him. And and understandably so, and, and rightly so, I would say. Look, I, I see potential in Logan. I do, genuinely. He's not giving him the shot, though. And it's just, it sends a bit of a, the message it sends isn't great. Look, again, objectively, Alex is the better driver than Logan. No one's denying that. No, not even the most you know fuming person on Twitter is denying that Alex is the better driver than Logan. But this is not only about principle, but also the message it sends, the pressure it puts on Alex, the the hit to Logan's confidence. This is going to take. 
I actually, yeah, I think this does more harm than good. If I was James Vowles, I don't think I would have swapped them. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Interested to hear what you think about on this one. My name's Tom Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.